Hey everyone, I'm Anorin. Before I dive into this crazy story, please like and subscribe if you want to hear more about surviving toxic relationships and coming out on top. Trust me, you'll want to stick around for this wild ride. So, I'm sitting in my corner office, basking in the glow of my latest successful marketing campaign, when my phone rings. I nearly spit out my coffee when I see the name on the screen. Vivian, my mother-in-law from hell. Hello? I answer, my voice shaking. Anorin, darling, it's been far too long. I roll my eyes. Yeah, five years of blissful silence. Ever since Jake's accident, Vivian had made it her life's mission to blame me for her son's death, as if I was the one driving that night. I have a proposition for you, Vivian continues, her voice dripping with fake sweetness. I'm going on a luxury cruise next month, and I'd love for you to join me. We have so much to catch up on. I'm speechless. Is this the same woman who called me a gold-digging witch at Jake's funeral? I... I'll have to think about it, I stammer. Of course, dear, take your time. It would mean so much to me. After hanging up, I immediately call my best friend, Tessa. She wants you to go on a cruise? After everything she put you through? Tessa exclaims. I know, it's insane, but part of me wonders if this is her way of trying to make amends. Tessa sighs. Honey, people like Vivian don't change, but maybe this is your chance for closure. You could finally tell her off and move on with your life. I chew my lip, considering. You really think I should go? I think you need to do what's best for you. But if you do go, promise me you'll be careful and call me every day. Later that night, I find myself staring at old photos of Jake and me. We were so happy before Vivian's interference. Maybe this cruise could be a fresh start. A chance to heal old wounds and finally put the past behind me. With a deep breath, I pick up my phone and dial Vivian's number. I've thought about your offer, I say when she answers. I'll go on the cruise with you. Wonderful, Vivian chirps. I just know we'll have a marvelous time. As I hang up, a knot forms in my stomach. What have I just agreed to? Am I walking into another one of Vivian's traps? Or could this genuinely be an opportunity for reconciliation? I spend the next few weeks preparing for the trip, shopping for cruise-worthy outfits and trying to calm my nerves. The night before departure, Tessa comes over with a bottle of wine. To new beginnings, she toasts, clinking her glass against mine. Or to finally closing this chapter of my life, I add. As I pack my suitcase, I can't shake the feeling that this cruise is going to change everything. For better or worse, I'm about to embark on a journey that will force me to confront my past and hopefully find a way to move forward. Little did I know, Vivian had plans of her own, and this cruise was about to become the battleground for the fight of my life. As I stepped onto the cruise ship, my stomach churned with a mix of anticipation and dread. Vivian stood at the gangway, her face a mask of forced politeness. Anorin, dear, you made it, she said her voice as cold as ice. No hug, no warmth, just a curt nod. Hello, Vivian, I replied, trying to keep my tone neutral. Thanks for inviting me. She waved her hand dismissively. Come along, I'll introduce you to the others. I followed her to the upper deck, where a small group was gathered. Vivian's new husband, Gerald, a portly man with a receding hairline, gave me a once-over that made my skin crawl. So this is the famous Anorin, he said, his voice dripping with sarcasm. Vivian's told us so much about you. I bet she has, I thought bitterly. Next was Vivian's sister, Patricia, who looked like Vivian's carbon copy, only with more wrinkles and a permanent scowl. Charmed, Patricia said, clearly anything but. As Vivian launched into a story about her recent shopping spree, I noticed a handsome man in a cruise staff uniform watching our group. He caught my eye and smiled, walking over. Welcome aboard. I'm Marco, your activity director for this cruise. If you need anything, don't hesitate to ask. For the first time since boarding, I felt myself relax a little. Thanks, Marco. I'm Anorin. Over the next few days, I tried to make the best of the situation, but something felt off. Vivian kept disappearing for long stretches, always coming back looking pale and irritated. One afternoon, as I was heading to the pool, 
I overheard Vivian and Gerald arguing in hushed tones around the corner. You need to tell her, Vivian, Gerald hissed. That's why we brought her on this damn cruise in the first place. I know, I know, Vivian snapped back, but I can't just blurt out that I'm dying and need her help. She'll run for the hills. I froze, my heart pounding. Dying? Vivian was dying? Before I could process this information, Vivian rounded the corner, nearly colliding with me. Oh, and Norin, she exclaimed, her face flushing. I was just looking for you. Would you be a dear and help me with my medication? These old hands just aren't as steady as they used to be. And so it began. Vivian's requests started small, helping with pills, fetching her drinks, accompanying her to the ship's doctor. But as the days wore on, her demands grew more frequent and more unreasonable. Anorin, I need you to help me shower. Anorin, you simply must stay with me tonight. I'm feeling faint. Anorin, be a dear and cancel your spa appointment. I need you to rub my feet. It hit me like a ton of bricks. This wasn't about reconciliation at all. Vivian had invited me on this cruise to be her personal, round-the-clock caregiver. As if that wasn't bad enough, I started noticing other passengers giving me strange looks and whispering as I passed. It all came to a head at dinner one night when I overheard a woman at the next table. That's her, the woman whispered to her companion. The gold digger who drove her husband to his death and now won't even help her poor, sick mother-in-law. I felt like I'd been slapped. Vivian had been spreading lies about me to anyone who would listen. Furious, I confronted Vivian in her cabin that night. How could you? I demanded. You invited me here under false pretenses and now you're slandering me to the entire ship? Vivian's face twisted into a sneer. Oh, please. You owe me this much after what you did to my Jake. The least you can do is make yourself useful in my final days. I stormed out, my mind reeling. This cruise had turned into a nightmare, and we were only halfway through. Little did I know, things were about to get much, much worse. The next morning, I marched to Vivian's cabin, my blood boiling. I found her lounging on the balcony, sipping a mimosa. We need to talk, I said, my voice trembling with anger. Vivian raised an eyebrow. Whatever about, dear? Cut the act. I know why you really invited me on this cruise. You're not interested in reconciliation. You just wanted a free nurse. Vivian's face twisted into a sneer. Oh, don't act so high and mighty. After what you did to my Jake, this is the least you can do. I didn't do anything to Jake. It was an accident. An accident? Vivian spat. You nagged him into working those long hours. You pushed him to drive home that night. You might as well have been behind the wheel yourself. I was stunned. Is that really what you think? It's what I know, Vivian hissed. And now you owe me. I've got cancer, Anorin. The least you can do is take care of me in my final days. Before I could respond, Gerald and Patricia burst in. What's going on here? Gerald demanded. Anorin is refusing to help me, Vivian wailed, suddenly playing the victim. After everything I've done for her. Patricia rounded on me. How dare you? Vivian opened her heart to you, invited you on this lovely cruise, and this is how you repay her? I felt like I was going crazy. That's not what happened at all. She... Enough! Gerald roared. I think you should leave, Anorin. Now! Feeling defeated, I fled the cabin. I found myself at the ship's bar, fighting back tears. Rough day? A familiar voice asked. It was Marco. I spilled everything to him. Vivian's manipulation, the lies, the guilt tripping. Marco listened intently. That's awful, Anorin. No one deserves to be treated like that. I just don't know what to do, I admitted. Well, for starters, we can gather some evidence, Marco suggested. I've seen Vivian around the ship. She doesn't seem nearly as ill as she's making out to be. Over the next few days, Marco became my secret ally. We documented Vivian's behavior how she'd act sickly around me but would be laughing and drinking with her friends when she thought I wasn't looking. Meanwhile, Vivian's demands grew more outrageous. She insisted I skip meals to tend to her, woke me up at all hours for trivial requests, and even tried to guilt me into canceling my flight home. You can't leave me, Anorin, she pleaded. I need you. 
You can move in with me after the cruise. It's the least you can do for family. That was the last straw. I realized Vivian had no intention of ever letting me go. She'd keep me trapped in this cycle of guilt and obligation forever if I let her. With Marco's help, I gathered all the evidence we'd collected. Photos, videos, overheard conversations. I even managed to record Vivian admitting she'd exaggerated her illness to manipulate me. Standing outside Vivian's cabin, evidence in hand, I took a deep breath. It was time to put an end to this toxic relationship once and for all. You've got this, Anorin, Marco encouraged me. Remember, you don't owe her anything. I nodded, squaring my shoulders. You're right. It's time I stood up for myself. As I knocked on Vivian's door, I felt a strange sense of calm. For the first time in years, I was taking control of my life. Whatever happened next, I was ready to face it head on. The door opened, revealing Vivian's surprised face. Anorin, what's the meaning of this? We need to talk, Vivian, and this time you're going to listen. I burst into Vivian's cabin, evidence in hand. It's over, Vivian. I know everything. I played the recordings, revealing her lies and manipulation. Vivian's face paled as her own voice filled the room. You recorded me? She sputtered. I had to prove what you've been doing. I said, my voice steady. A crowd gathered at the door as I confronted Vivian, Gerald, and Patricia. I showed photos of Vivian partying when she claimed to be bedridden. For years I let you guilt me over an accident I couldn't control, I said, addressing the onlookers. But I'm done. No one has the right to treat others this way, family or not. Murmurs of agreement spread through the crowd. Vivian shrank back suddenly looking frail. Anorin, please, she whimpered. I'm sorry. I just needed you. I felt a twinge of guilt but stood firm. No, Vivian. You wanted to control me. I'm getting off at the next port. As I left, Marco followed me out. That was incredible, he said. Listen, I'm quitting to start my own business. Adventure tours for people rebuilding their lives. Want to be my partner? I grinned. You know what? I'm in. Six months later, our business, Phoenix Journeys, was thriving. Tessa burst into my office with news. Vivian's meltdown had gone viral, ruining her reputation. Gerald had left her, and Patricia was arrested for fraud. I shook my head, feeling mixed emotions. Karma, I guess. Ready for our pleasure cruise next week? Tessa asked. Absolutely, I smiled. No toxic people this time. Marco poked his head in. Meeting in five, partner. As I gathered my things, I caught my reflection. The strong, confident woman staring back was a far cry from who I was a year ago. I thought about Vivian briefly, hoping she'd gotten help. But I no longer felt responsible for her. I'd learned it wasn't selfish to prioritize my own well-being. Joining Marco and our team, I felt excited for the future. Life was full of new adventures. And for the first time in years, I was free to explore them all. The story has come to an end. Now, I have a question for you. Was I justified in exposing Vivian's manipulation publicly, or should I have handled it privately? What would you have done in my situation? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your experiences and opinions matter, and they might help others facing similar challenges. If this story resonated with you, please consider liking the video and subscribing to our channel. We share more stories about overcoming toxic relationships and personal growth. Your support helps us continue creating content that empowers others to stand up for themselves and break free from manipulation. Remember, your mental health and well being should always come first. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to reading your responses.